God for the word that he's, he's going to deliver us this morning. I pray that every heart be open to receive and every um, ear be open to hear and every eye to see. I want you to turn your books with me to the book of Daniel today. Um, I want to talk, God dropped in my spirit to talk a little bit. Uh, we're going to speak on um, understanding I mean, when you talk about prophetically speaking, you must, um, what's interesting about prophetically speaking is to, to, to understand the scriptures and understand what's going on today, or opening and a revealing to what's going on the time and the season, amen? Jesus wants his people to know the time and the season that we're in, amen? He wants us to know. Now, the world might not know, but we should, we should know, because Jesus said, I'll keep nothing hidden from you. So... We shouldn't be in 2018 dressing like we in 1975. You know what I'm saying? You look crazy dressing like you in 1975 if you in 2018 because you out of you out of season. I'm just using that as an illustration. But I want to talk a little bit about seasons because we've been, you know, God gave us a message in 2017, a breakthrough and a rising up. God was talking about breaking through and rising up. And at the end of 2017, he says, go forward. And at the beginning of 2018, he says, reveal my glory. I want you to understand something. When God says breakthrough, breakthrough, rise up, go forth, and reveal his glory, that's not a good, that's not a, a nice sound to a sermon. Amen? That's not something that God is like, oh, man, that was a good sermon. That was a good, that was a nice, that is what God is doing. He, he is breaking through. He is, because we, remember now, we have received that seed from where? We have received the heavenly seed. Amen? Christ came from heaven because the only way we can produce a kingdom on earth, you got to have a heavenly seed. Because whatever you produce, God, whatever, whatever's produced, this, you got, it has to come from where the seed is. So now that's why we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. There is no way that the kingdom on earth, the kingdom in heaven can be on earth unless he produce, unless he sends a heavenly seed. Christ is that heavenly seed. Amen. And when we receive that heavenly seed, that's why we're in this world, but we're no longer of this world. Why? Because now we are from a heavenly seed. Amen? But that heavenly seed, but it has to be a breakthrough. Because how many of you know that we got a lot of issues in our life that, that, that God has to break down so we can receive the seed? And then when you receive the seed, there's a rising up. Amen? There's a rising up. And then there's a going forth. And, there's a, there, and when there's a going forth, there's a revealing of God's glory. No longer I live, but who? Christ lives. See, in other words, I ought to be seeing, witnessing, I and mean, I'm doing this right now. When I see your life and you see my life, they should be witnessing Christ. Amen? They should be witnessing Christ, not witnessing being black, though being black is beautiful. Not witnessing being white, though white is beautiful. Because that's the dirt the seed went into. Y'all better get that. That's the dirt the seed. The seed went into the dirt. We're not to witness the dirt. We're to witness the seed that went into it. Amen. Because when the seed began to grow, everybody's not admiring the dirt. They're admiring the apple trees. Amen. They're admiring the apple trees. In other words, the dirt is beautiful, but it's what's in the dirt that causes people to get attention, to get people's attention. But God began to deal with me, and it was still, we, God is still, I, I believe God is still, because we're in 2008, 180, and God is saying it's a year to go forward. God is calling his sons and daughters to go forward, to reveal his glory, not to go forward. And I want you to understand something, because there's a gospel out there that's talking about going forth, but in this gospel, it's about revealing your glory. See, this, 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 you got to be very careful because remember now the Bible said, if, if it was possible that even the very elect would be fooled, but it's an if. If means a word of condition. That means that, that the elect cannot be fooled because they are in a position and a condition that they cannot be fooled. But see, this new gospel is about you going forth and people revealing their glory. But the Bible says all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So when you receive that seed from heaven, it's no longer you live, but Christ living in you. So now I should be seeing Christ in you. You're revealing his glory. So somebody, so when somebody see you, they ought to be like, oh man, that's a witness. I, I'm witnessing Christ, man. You know, I'm witnessing, I'm witnessing. At your job, I'm witnessing Christ. In the, in the grocery store, I'm witnessing Christ. In your job, uh, uh, in your home, I'm witnessing Christ. It is no longer... It is no longer an anointing people want to claim that's confined to four walls. Actually, the truth be told, since Jesus came, it should never be confined to four walls in the first place. Amen? Matter of fact, he anointed them and sent them what? Forward. So they can witness who? Everybody say, witness Christ. 
Now remember now, it's witnessing Christ because Christ means anointed one. Oh, y'all better get this. If they're witnessing Christ, Christ means anointed one. Anointed one, what, what does the anointing do? So when they're witnessing Christ in your life, that's because you're the answer to their problems. When you have the Spirit of God in you, you have now become the answer. I'm going to tell you, uh, Donald Trump, Obama, they are not the answers. No president is the answer. The answer is in you. The Christ says, look at someone say, the Christ in me. It's, it's the Christ in me. Because it is the, watch this, it is the anointing that destroys what? And where is the yoke? Say, in my heart. I got God. God said, God got to clean up my heart. Because if my heart is not cleaned up, then I'm not going to deal with you accordingly. I'm not going to deal with you properly. And people, when they look at my life, they're going to see me and stuff. See, I'm a, can I be real with y'all? Can we be real? Don't nobody want to see you. Don't nobody want to see how smart you are, how intellectually wise. That's why Paul said, Paul said, I could come. Paul said, now I could come enticing you with some intellect. Paul said, but I counted all dung. See, you know you're growing when you get like Paul. Paul said, I count all that stuff dung that you may see that I apprehend. But one thing, that's Christ Jesus, forgetting all those things behind me. I want you to see the Savior. I want you to see the Deliverer. I want you to see the Provider and the Keeper. Amen? So... Then God began to take me here today because we have to see it. God said, look at someone say, you got to see it. Say, I need to see it. Okay, then we're going to go to Daniel because we have to understand that. Now, you have to say something. Daniel is in a time that the Spirit is being poured. They get in the Spirit, but not like we have it. Oh, Y'all better hear what I'm saying. The Spirit of God comes up on, on them, but not like we have it. Y'all with me? Okay. Now... Let's begin to read in the book of Dan. We're going to read in the, I'll tell you, because I want to see Daniel deal with Darius. Everybody say King Darius. Because you know what's interesting about King Darius or King Nebuchadnezzar or King Cyrus or Bel what's his name? Um, the, the, the one in the middle, uh, Bar Belzar, 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 these kings. These were ungodly men. Everybody say, y'all got to understand this. People talking about Trump and Obama. No, no, no. They were ungodly men established by God. Well, I'm somebody, what? Read your Bible. They were men. They, King Nebuchadnezzar was established by God. It's in the word. Though he was not a man of God, God established. That's why I trip sometimes. I'm like, do we not see? Do we not understand? Why are you fighting against Donald Trump? Don't you understand? You're going to be fighting against God himself and his purpose and plan watch your mouth look at someone say watch your mouth watch your mouth God establishes the authority thereof but watch this this is interesting but look at King we're gonna look at King Darius now King Darius has he's gonna deal with Daniel we're gonna deal with that this one let's read at the first we're gonna read at the first verse first verse in chapter Four. I think I want to go to four. Wait a minute. Hold up. Let me make sure. No. Chap Hold up. Chapter six. You're right. Chapter six. We're on chapter six. Okay. Let's start reading. Daniel chapter 6 verse 1 it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom and over these three governors of whom Daniel was one that the satraps might give account to them so I want y'all to understand a man or a woman of God can be in politics this is not this kingdom right here that Darius, you're talking about the Persians and Medians. That is not the kingdom of God, though God is using it to deal with Jerusalem and Judea. Y'all with me? This is just like the United States. God does establish kings, and therefore he look, say so he got assassins in place. Oh, y'all. How many of y'all know Billy Graham was an assassin? Oh, that brother was an assassin. Billy Graham was nothing to play with. They used to, when they called them to the White House, because they was in trouble. Amen? 
Because they call him. Even, even Clinton called, come, I need help. Come on, Billy, come on in, Billy. Come in. Tell me what Jesus got to say. Therefore, there are men and women of God that God does set in positions of the world. But I got to show you something because we are seeing this, but there's interesting. There's, we, we're seeing people, we, people who look like they are being set in the music industry, but there's a problem. And I want to show you the problem, too, because these, the ones that God is setting, if I say, they are different. They are different. In other words, the ones that God is setting, it wasn't about their career. With God, it wasn't about them being blowed up or being established. How many of you know that Joseph was set in politics? But it was for a purpose. How many of you all know that Esther was set in politics? But it was for a purpose. Everybody say, the people of God. They were both set there for the people of God. See, when you start setting, when you start being getting set in certain arenas, and you don't know who you are, God didn't send you. Oh, wait a minute, you ain't get what I just said. When you don't know that whatever arena God put you in is to reveal his He didn't put you in that arena because no money. He didn't put that arena. He didn't put you in that arena because he wanted to blow you up. He put you in that arena because he wanted somebody to see his. So Daniel was now in an arena, and not only he, he, he not one of the low. He he not, come on, Daniel not one of the little low ones. He up there with the three. Go ahead. So the king set governors over the kingdom so that the king would suffer no loss. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Verse 3. Then this Daniel mm -hmm. distinguished himself above the governors and satraps. Come on. Come on. This Daniel did what? It distinguished himself. He extinguished himself above the three. Now the three are over all the what? The, satraps. The kingdom. Right? The whole kingdom. And, over the, and now Daniel has... Eva, God has called Daniel to rise above that. How many know that you can't keep the anointing down? See, especially when God's people are at stake. See, Joseph rose up. Now, Joseph would, his credentials might have not caused him to rise up because Joseph would, Joseph would have had a prison record. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Joseph rose up, but he was in prison. He was called out of prison. How many of you know that God can have you in a place to look crazy just to bring you to a place to rise you up? But you got to get this. It's how you act in the place of crazy. See, it's how you act in the place of crazy. Because see, when Joseph was in prison, he didn't deserve to be there, but how he acted, he extinguished himself. He rose up in prison. See, it's how you act when you don't have nothing. It's how you act when, you, when everything looks crazy that can cause you to be only second in charge. Because if things run you, God can use you. Okay, but how, because they tell us that he, that Daniel did what again? How did, what did it say Daniel did what? Distinguished himself. Okay, let's watch how Daniel distinguished himself. Go ahead. Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because of the spirit of excellence okay, that was in him. Okay, everybody say the spirit of excellence. Look at somebody say, the spirit of excellence. He didn't say excellence. He didn't say Daniel esteemed himself because of excellence. He said that Daniel esteemed himself because of the spirit of excellence. Now, I, I want you to stay one point there. Stay one finger there, and we're going to read Acts 1-8. Say 1-8. Say year 18. Go ahead. One for man, eight for new beginning. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. Watch this. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Power to do what? Hmm? Power to become a witness. See, Daniel had a spirit of excellence upon him so he could be a what? Witnessing who? Christ Witnessing who? Christ. Christ. Daniel had a spirit of excellence on him that he could be a witness. And the spirit of excellence is how he caused himself to what? Distinguish himself. Distinguish himself. He was distinguished by the spirit of excellence. 
But the Bible says when you receive the Holy Spirit, that you shall have power to be what? See, Daniel was getting ready. Y'all better get this. Y'all better get this. Daniel was being elevated to be put in a position to glorify God, to reveal God's glory. But I'm going to show you, man, that was going to be, see, we like, see, many of us are like, man, we, we would like that Daniel position because, you know, think about it. You know, you, you, you second in charge, and you, you eating, you, 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 I mean, you rolling, you got the rings, you got, you got a Mercedes chariot outside, you know what I'm saying, Rolls Royce, cha -cha -cha, the best horses, you know what I'm saying. When people look at you, they look at the king. You better hear what I just said, it's revelation there. When they look at you, see, they knew they couldn't, even though Daniel was a, a Israel, when they looked at him, they looked at the king. They could not disrespect him because he was represented by the king. You know what I'm saying? Dan, Daniel was influencing people. Daniel, Daniel was an influencer. Everybody say influencer. Say, cause I want y'all to write this down. Because you need an influencer when you have persuaders. See, any time in the world where there's going to be persuaders, you're going to need an influencer. Amen? Because we're going to see the King Darius going to meet some persuaders. But thank God that God raised up a what? An influencer. Amen? Anytime that God raises up an influencer, you better believe because he has some persuaders. Y'all with me? Okay, now watch this. Keep going. No, no, go, 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 back to, go back to Daniel. We finished there. We just, I just wanted you to receive that one eight from where we're going. Daniel 6, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Daniel distinguished himself because of the spirit of excellence that was in him. Mm -hmm. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. The spirit that's over Daniel caused the king to want to set Daniel over all this thing, of, of, of all this kingdom. Because Daniel was anointed by the Spirit to be a witness. Amen? And we read in Acts. But how did, see, but Daniel just didn't get to that place of being a witness. See, it didn't start right there. It didn't start right there. It actually started in Daniel 1.8. We done went to Acts 1.8. Now let's go to Daniel 1.8. Go to Daniel's 1.8. What happened? Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. Mm -hmm. But Daniel purposed in his heart. Come on. See, Daniel, the reason Daniel was in a position to be, have a spirit of excellence, the reason Daniel was in a position to reveal God's glory, because he had purposed in his heart. Go ahead. He had purpose in his heart to not defile himself. To not defile himself. See, Daniel, the reason why God can use Daniel and the spirit of excellence is on Daniel and he can raise Daniel up because Daniel had purpose in his heart. I like to say he had purpose in his heart. He had purpose in his heart that he would not defile himself. Is there anybody in the house that has made up your mind that you're not going to defile yourself? See, you can't, God can't use you till your heart is made up. Because the spirit is not going to dwell in an unclean temple. So God is looking for some sons and daughters who have purpose in their heart. You know, it's funny that, you know, it's funny people talk about purpose, right? They want purpose, purpose. Well, God is looking for somebody who, who wants purpose in their heart. See, we want purpose in what we do. God is looking for somebody who has purpose in their heart. Purpose to understand no, I'm not defiling this, this house right here. See, when you have purpose in your heart, he you said, I, I made up my mind, this is not going to be defiled. So he's in the kingdom. Now because his heart is in alignment with God, his heart is in alignment with the Spirit of God, God says, now I know I can use him and I can raise him up because he'll never forget my purpose. He'll never forget my purpose because there's nothing the king can offer him because his heart already taken, his heart already mine. There's nothing the king can offer him. They, you know, Cyrus, going, uh, there's one king that tried to offer Daniel, try to offer him gold and silver and this stuff. He said, no, 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 you can keep that because well, the word I'm about to prophesy to you, you're about to lose the kingdom. Look at somebody and say, God is looking for sons and daughters who have purpose in their heart not to defile themselves. Themself. See, it ain't even talking about defiling somebody else. 
Because if you won't defile yourself, you surely not. See, you won't have to worry about me sleeping with you because I'm not going to defile me. You ain't got to worry about me pushing up on you trying to get between your legs because it ain't about trying to get you. I'm keeping me clean. So God can trust me in a situation where my office have women or so why? Because I'm not, they can come in there with their hips and lips and they can come in looking fine. It's not about them. It's about I made up my mind. I have purpose in my heart. It's a terrible thing to run into somebody who ain't purposed in their heart yet, who ain't sold out yet. But see, when you run into a purpose, when you run into a person who has purpose in their heart not to defile themselves, you can be fine all day long. You can be cute all day long. Baby girl, homeboy, it ain't about you. My heart already belongs to somebody else. My heart is already, my heart already, my heart already got purpose. I know in whom I believe. So therefore, you cute, yeah, you know, yeah, I, 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 you cute, you cute, yeah. Yeah, you got some swag, but, but my heart belonged to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So even though you cute and you got swag, I can't be moved. I can't be persuaded. Come on, look at somebody say, purpose in your heart. See, Daniel, I thought it was so interesting that it's in 1 8 that he made up his mind. He said, Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. Watch this. With the portion of the king. I want y'all to understand that. Daniel would not defile himself with the portion of the king. See, king represents authority. Daniel would not defile himself with the portion of those who are in authority in the United States. Those who are over the movie industry. Oh, we done got quiet now. I done lost them. I done lost them. Those in the music industry. Those in corporate America. Daniel said, I'm not going to defile myself with the portion of the king. Now, let me give you some history on that. See, Daniel went, when, when King Nebuchadnezzar, he captured Israel, when he captured, they were going to sit them down. They brought the good looking ones, the talented ones, the gifted, all the gifted children inside the king's house. And they sat them down at the king's table. But how many know that when you sit at the table with worldly people, you got to watch what you eat? Yeah. You got to watch what you eat because you already have purpose. You're not there for them to school you. Je the Bible said Jesus sat down with sinners and publicans. He didn't sit down to be schooled by them. He sat down to give them purpose. Amen. He got purpose. Keep reading. Read all eight. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, mm -hmm. nor ahead. with the wine which he drank. He said, I don't want your portion, I don't want your, I don't want your food, and I don't want your wine. You know what I think about wine? I think about that thing that make you feel good. See, it's, it's symbolic. It don't have to be wine, but some of that thing, sometimes you got to not want what the world trying to offer you to make you feel good. You might not want what the world trying to intoxicate you with. You know, you don't, you don't want that stuff the world trying to offer you that's going to have you intoxicated. Amen? That trying to sway you, you know, trying to persuade you, girl, just try this one time. You know that, don't, just, just, just try this one time. You don't want the world authority to, to persuade you to begin to partake of the king's delicacies. Because y'all know the world's delicacies are today, right? The world's delicacies are anything that is going to make that money. You know what I'm saying? And you got to make sure that you don't defile yourself with the world's delicacies. They got a lot of schemes and schemes and a lot of things that is all about making that money. When you have, when you have purpose in your, heart, in your heart to change lives. See, the world system is not trying to change lives. They're trying to make money. But God has already given you a purpose. Your purpose is to change lives. Go ahead. Therefore, mm -hmm. he requested of the chief of the eunuchs uh -huh. that he might not defile himself. Now, I want you to... He requested... In his kingdom, watch this, 
God says, even though I put you there, you can make me question their honor. As long as you can, uh, you know what, I, I can't listen to that music right now. I can't, that's if I, they'll change it. Because why? He has made you an influencer. See, because you're an influencer, they know that they need you. See, the king in Egypt know he needed Joseph. So Joseph was able to make some demands. He, you know, he knew he needed. See, that's why God is raising up the anointing. Why? Because the anointing, the world needs you. So you don't have to be afraid to make some requests. Oh, they don't they hear me. <laughs> well, I'm not going to ask them for Sunday off. Why not? Why not? Why are you going to ask them for Sunday off? If they don't give you Sunday off, that's not your assignment. The Jews don't worry. The Jews don't hesitate by asking for Saturday off. Matter of fact, if the Old Testament don't mind doing it, because they know who they are, how much greater should the sons and daughters? We got everything to do but hear that word. Say, no, I can't meet you on Sunday. Why? I'm an influencer. And I'm not going to be persuaded to, to make, because you don't think that day is important. Well, I do. Well, I, I can't, well you, well, you need to try to, well, we, okay, 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 I'll meet you on Monday. I know you could meet me on Monday all along. You were just trying me. You were, and God allowed you to try me so you could, so, so, so I see if I would be able to stand on, well, God want to see what did I find to be more important. Are uh, we, see, this is going to be a good word. I mean. I, I, I had to write out, persuaded by the world, influenced by God for his purpose. Let's go back to Daniel. Now that we know the eight, we know that we've been empowered by the Holy Spirit, one eight. Amen? And then the reason he was able to be empowered by Daniel eight, because he refused to defile himself. See, when you, when you purpose in your heart not to defile yourself, you got the Holy Spirit. Oh, my God. God can, oh, my God. He can send you to the president's house. He can give you six figures. He can give you eight figures. He can raise your side to why? Because he know that you won't, none of that stuff is, in your heart, that stuff can't get in. None of that stuff will give you identity. He can sit you down with Jay-Z, Beyonce, and all of them, because why? He know that you are the influencer in that table. They are the persuaders, but you are the influencer. Go ahead. Go back to six. We're going to finish this up. Come on. Daniel chapter 6, verse 4. Yes. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel Ooh. concerning the kingdom. See, when you become an influencer, the world going to come get you. See, some of us, the reason why you're not under attack, the Jesus said the reign with me is to suffer. But the reason some of us ain't suffer because you ain't no influencer. See, you are... Your friends talk anywhere around you. In other words, you're not. See, when you become an influencer, your friends don't like you. Your people don't want. Because guess what? They trying to prepare. They trying to persuade people to have sex and this and that. But you are influencing people to stay holy, live righteous. Say, so wait, 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 hold up, hold up. Your family, like, nah, nah, nah. Oh, shit, Shanique will come about. Oh, man, we got, we got to do something so she won't come by. Why? Because she going to influence them not to do what we trying to persuade them to do. Come on, somebody. See, the bottom line, your job, see, God, the devil got persuaders. But God says, that's okay because I got influencers. And every time they try to persuade somebody, I'm going to send them an influencer. Come on. See, God says, I got, I, I, but I got to have some sons and daughters that have purpose in their hearts. I got the purpose in my heart. Look at what I say. If Daniel had the power to do it in the spirit, so do I. Keep on going. Keep on going. But they could not find any charge or fault. I want you to underline that. See, underline what he said. They wanted to come after him. But they couldn't find no place in them. See, this is what God was dealing with me about. We say we have the Holy Ghost. We say we have the Spirit of God. But if the world was examining us, would they find a place in us to charge us? See, they wanted to get rid of Daniel. 
But Daniel had such a spirit of excellence. He dotted the I's, crossed the T's, and put a period on it. You know what I'm saying? He had such a spirit of excellence. Then when the world came at him, they can find no place in him. They can find no... And see, God says, see, that's the kind of power. Because when you become a witness of me, the world is going to be trying to find a place in you. Amen? See, you got to make the world do what they do because you do what you do. What does the world do? You got to make them lie. Because the truth is, they can't find a place. See, I begin, I don't know what y'all, honestly, I want y'all, I want us to think in the spirit. I started really thinking about that scripture. I'm like, man, I, I, I use myself as being transparent. I was like, man, I was getting a little laxy daisy in my life. And, you know, I knew I had to be with somebody at the my office at 9 o'clock, but I was like, okay, I, I'm tired. I roll in there about 9.15, 9.30. You know, I'm being serious with y'all. See, I was like, man, getting a laxy daisy. I'm like, okay, no, I can't do this. Getting a laxy daisy. You no, know, riding there about 10. Do, I'm going to do what I can do. Hey, I'm good. I'm good. You know, God will check you, right? So I said, God, like, because... He said, okay, now you, because watch this, if you have a spirit of excellence, then it's going to play out even in what you do. So, you know, I had to have a little talk, had, had a little talk to him, and God was like, let me talk to you for a minute. He said, somebody, let me talk to you. Because watch, that was a place, y'all in here. Come on, that's just a small place. It's still a place. It's a place that they can find, the enemy can say, they could have ran back to King Darius and say, Darius, you know what? Daniel don't never be on time on nothing he do. Y'all ain't hearing. How you gonna promote him over all us? And on his record, he been late every time. Somebody said, thank God for grace and mercy. I'm gonna mess some of us up in here though. You said that grace and mercy as an excuse to be late. That grace and mercy came to get you right. See, some of us are like, thank God for his grace and mercy, and you're going to still be late. No, the grace and mercy is for you to come on time. So now I'm like, man, I I'm up. I'm traveling. I'm busy. Ever since I had to talk, I'm like, 20 minutes, 30 minutes early. Let's see how I feel. Because I don't want to leave the accuser a place to accuse. That don't mean we perfect, but we're going to be made perfected. And when somebody come to you and correct you, you can't be rolling your eyes and looking crazy because God says, I you better get out my face. You ain't my boy. You lucky he ain't used the boss. See, some of y'all, I can see some of y'all face. Y'all were like, I didn't, I don't know if you're, that's the same thing. Oh, it's the same thing. The way you treat your husband. See, when you sit around your girls and you start talking about your husband in the wrong way, God, wait, God said, hold up. No. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Because now your girls can go and testify against you. That you, and you in church talking about, yeah, I'm a good, I'm a Proverbs 31. God said, no, you 30. God said, no, you're 30 and a half. Because you don't know how to keep your mouth closed. Oh, y'all didn't know God was going there this morning. Yeah, he going there this morning. He, he grooming us. You know what I'm saying? And the way you talk and treat your wife or your friends. If the world was looking in you, if the world was looking at you, would they be wondering why God promoted you? See, because the world, they know they can't stop God. Because the Bible says, he who humbles himself. See, when you are humble, God is guaranteed by his word to exalt you. He got to do it. Because when you humble yourself, when he exalts you, no longer you live. 
Because you died when you humbled yourself. Now Christ liveth in me, and Christ in me now is the hope of glory. They see, they're witnessing hope. But God says, for them to witness Christ, I got to get, I got to get rid of you. Deny yourself, pick up your cross, and let me nail your flesh to it. So when you rise up, remember I told you, breakthrough, right? When you rise up and go forward, they see his glory. See, some of us in here, many of us got areas. Don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. God is shaking up and staring up areas in your life. I'm telling you, not to take you with silver and gold, but to promote you in him. So they can see his glory. Because some of you rising up, he ain't going to give you a new job. He just going to make you shine at the old one. He just going to make you shine at the old one. Listen. Let's keep reading. We're going to get this. Let's keep reading. Go ahead. They sought to find a charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find any charge or fault because he was faithful. They could not find a charge against Daniel concerning their kingdom. Somebody going to get that. They could not find a charge against Daniel concerning their kingdom. Kingdom means their way of doing things. Kingdom means kingdom, king dominion, the king's way of doing things. They could not, even though Daniel was in the world system, he was in compliance with the system. They could not, they didn't say for God, they could not find a place in him to accuse him because he still complied with the world system. If we examine our taxes, would they find a place in some of us? Do you have maybe three or four many, too many dependents that you should have? No, doggone well, you ain't got no kids. Talking about what they visit. You know what I'm saying? Just because your nephews visit don't mean you should be claiming them. Some of, boy, some of y'all faces like... <laughs> hey, I'm going to tell you what my pastor used to tell, tell us. If you can't say hallelujah, just say, ouch. Just say, <laughs> come on, Jesus. Cut it out, cut it out, cut it out. Cut what out? That cancer that's hindering you. That cancer that's hindering you. I don't, I don't know about you, but when I was reading this, it inspired. I wrote this. I said, God, if Daniel can live a life excellent according to the world system, then so can we. We can be on time. We can dot the I's. We can, we can, uh, if the government wants it, we can do what they, why? When they look into our records, we're going through audit right now. When they look in our records, they're going to find that we have a spirit of excellence. I declare it and decree it in Jesus' name. When they finish, then I come and they be like, this was, why? Because we have administration that got the eyes, cross the T's, and put a period on it. See, you can't be talking about you serving God when they look at your record, when they look at your company records. They like, what in the world? Your God is messy. Your God is out of order. Your God is very dysfunctional. Oh, that's corporation. When they look in your house. Your God is messy. Your God is very dysfunctional. The way you talk to your husband, the way you talk to the way y'all act, and what you watching, it's ouch. But I'm growing. But I'm growing. Keep on going. Nor was there any error or fault found in him. Come on, somebody should have screamed. Come on. There was no error or fault found in him because he had the spirit to be a witness. We be trying to use the Holy Ghost. Oh, I, I, come on, I can speak in tongues. We want to use the Holy Ghost to lay hands on the sick. But you want to disrespect your wife. They using the Holy Ghost. I got to get this. We want to use the Holy Ghost to make gospel songs and everybody calling our name. But you divorcing your wife? So the Holy Ghost didn't have no power to have you to love your home to keep your what kind of holy what kind of power you walking in that you can't even love you threw your wife to the side 
But everybody, but you know what? Nobody care about that. Man, he a mighty man. Uh, yeah, he might be a man, mighty, but he needs some deliverance. He need to redirect his focus. Because he surely has not purposed in his heart not to defile God. Because to treat your wife ungodly, God says, I'll shut up heaven. So we don't, that's real. Okay, it got quiet. Let's go. Let's go. Verse 5. Uh huh. Then these men said, What these men say? We shall not find any charge against this Daniel. We got, we're not going to find a place to get him because he even complied. But the spirit in him caused him to even comply with the worldly system. The worldly kingdom. Now you know. Now watch this. I gotta, here come the persuaders. If I say persuaders. Go ahead. We shall not find any charge against Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Some, they say. The only way we can get him is we he gotta attack his God. We got we gotta try to make the worldly system come in conflict with his God system. Oh come on, somebody. He said the only way we're gonna be able to get Daniel, because we know Daniel will obey the whole world system. But if that world system start playing with God's system, if that world system start instituting laws contrary to God's system, uh oh, there's a problem, there's a problem, there's a problem. They say, he down with the world system. He'll, he'll stop at the red lights. He'll do 55. Oh, we're going to be repenting after this. I'm serious. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. I'm going to be right there with y'all, so don't ask me to pray. You know what I'm saying? We, we, <laughs> You know the word don't belong to me because I wouldn't have preached this. Because <laughs> I'd be convicted by it. But I'm lining up. Say, line up. Line up. He said, we could not find a place in Daniel to accuse him according to the kingdom of the world. He said, I know how we'll get him. We're going to persuade the king to move contrary to his law, the kingdom of God. Remember I told you I'm going to give you a prophetic word for the season of time we're in. Obama was persuaded. The Bible says, I mean, Obama said, I have come to an evolution that same-sex marriage, evolution means to, to evolve. That same-sex marriages, he was persuaded by government. He was persuaded by people. If you go listen, don't, don't take my word for it. Go on YouTube and listen to him. He said he was persuaded. He looked at people. He was persuaded to implement a law that was contrary to the word of God. I was down with lining up with him everything until he did that. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. See, this ain't the first time. This nation, there was another president persuaded to believe it was okay to kill a baby in the womb. See, what we need to understand, I'm trying to give you the season and the time to understand why God raising those who are going to reveal his glory. I'm telling you, that's why God is keeping you hidden. All this church stuff, God, let them keep having their conferences. Let the church keep having their little parties because God getting ready to raise up some soldiers. See, God, see, they can have their party. God ain't even in it no more. They doing all this church stuff, ah, about what they want. All these committees about what they want. Everything, let me start that, let me start. And God says, you sitting here coming to me about you what you want. And I got a nation that made war against me. Because let me tell you something. When a nation begins to implement laws that's contrary to the word of God, that's a lawless nation. America is a lawless nation. But don't get, don't say, don't get sad. Because God about to raise up the anointing. God about to raise up the sons and daughters. But see, God got to find out those who are his. Because watch this. When it becomes, when it's persuaded to be a law, to break the law, there's a penalty. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I want you to get there. See, Daniel can serve. He was good as long as he did nothing wrong. But when they persuade the king to implement a law that was contradicting to Daniel's God's law, Daniel was now going to be found in a position where he was going to have to break the world's law. 
And to do that, they, I'm going I'm, I'm to go ahead and preach it out. To do that, they, they, they say that anyone king worship within the next 30 days other than you and anybody, they have to be thrown in the lion's den. See, the law say, now watch this. When the world is persuaded to be able to create laws, y'all better hear what I'm saying to you. When the world begins to create laws that's in contradiction of the word of God, when you break that law, that's going to be a penalty. And some of us think that God is going to deliver you from that penalty. Some of you think that God ain't going to have you go through that penalty. But see, you got to understand that. Read your book. In a, read, read your book in the book of Hebrews. And you will see that some people, when they, when they, when they stood, they, they got ate by lions. Lions, tigers, and bears. Some people got ran through by swords. I don't want to give you a fantasy because the truth be told, it's better to die in Christ. Because there is no death in Christ. And Daniel, they said, King, King Darius, sign this into law. They there persuading King to go ahead and read it, go ahead and read it, go ahead and read it, go ahead and read it. So they can see it in the word. Verse 6. So these governors and satraps thrown before the king and said thus to him, King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the kingdom and the administrators and satraps, the counselors and the advisors, have consulted together to establish a royal statute. Everybody but one man. See, in the world, you'll find yourself by yourself. See, y'all ever went, did, you, you ever wonder why ain't nobody being found by themselves in, in Hollywood with all the gospel singers? We got nobody standing out by them. Where, where they at? And what's, where they at? We're the ones that stand out and saying, no, this is not, this is not, this is not godly. This, I don't want to hear this is not politically correct. No, it's not godly. Don't try to beat around the bush. Represent who you stand for. This is not godly. Go ahead. We have established a royal statute mm -hmm. and a firm decree. Mm -hmm. That whomever petitions any god or man for 30 days, except you, O king, mm -hmm. shall be cast into the den of lions. See, when the king is not really what God needs him to be, he can easily be persuaded by the company he keep. And that's what happened to Obama. He was easily persuaded. Go ahead. Verse 8. When you start, let me say this. When you start loving the position and the title and the money more than you love God, see... See, King Darius hadn't purpose in his heart. And Obama and Donald Trump have not purpose in their heart. So they can easily be persuaded. Go ahead. Now, O King. O King, go ahead. Establish the decree uh -huh. and sign the writing mm -hmm. so that it cannot be changed. Uh -huh. go According ahead. to the law of Medes and, per and the Persians, so which does not alter. They got them. They done implemented a law that's in contradiction of his God. Now Daniel has to make a decision. Daniel now is in a position of authority. Come on now. Daniel is in a position of authority. I'm going to tell you something. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you are a cashier at Burger King. I don't care if you're an executive director. I don't care if you're a project director. I don't care if you're a teacher. Or look, you're going to come to this decision. You're going to come to this place. Will you love God? More than you love what you, what you are doing. Because everybody, why? Because you cannot reveal. See, you have not been tested yet. You have not been tested yet. But your test is coming. Your test is coming. Why? Because God is about to, God is raising up. 118, 118. He, boy, he's looking for some witnesses. And see, God, is, you, can, you ain't been a witness yet. See, we think a witness is how much money I got. And we testifying about how God took me out of the dug hill. We talking about how God took me out of the pole place. But the question, yeah, we're talking about how he delivered you. But now you're going to be tested on how you can represent him. It's good to have a testimony on how he delivered you. But now the next testimony is... Can you, how, how, how can you represent him? Can you reign, can you suffer for his behalf? Are you willing to lose everything for him? Are you willing to let go everything for him? Are you willing, <laughs> can you believe God can do it if they won't do it? Can you believe that God will suckle he, he'll come another angle if they take it? Can you say, oh, it's coming. I promise you, it's coming. It's going to hit you right in your face. 
You can't hide from it. Because watch this. The bigger you get, the more attention you drive. drive. Some of are like, God, I want you to, because I know, well, I'm in prayer. I'm in prayer, especially for our company. Be strong. Why well, I'm in prayer? Because God said international. If God going to take international, do you know how many demons that's going to get attention? Do you know how many politicians? Do you know how many political officers? You ain't going to be able to hide from them. We ain't going to be able to get up from them. They going to come and say, what are you teaching? But that's okay because we dot the I's. We cross the T's and we put a period on it. But see, even though he dotted the I's and crossed the T's and put a period on it, he said, now let's try them where their God is. Let's try them where their God is. They, and when he going to try you where your God is, what will you do then? But see, if you've been like Daniel, if you never ate the defilement, See, if you don't eat the defilement, then there's no place to pull you from. If you don't eat, what's the defilement? Don't eat the greed of money. Don't eat the, don't eat the world system. Don't eat what they tell you. Don't eat what they tell you that's important. Don't eat what they tell you that's valuable. Don't eat what they tell you how to do. Eat from the word of God. Go ahead. Verse 9. Therefore, King Darius signed that written decree. He signed it. Go ahead. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. Now, when Daniel knew that... The, Daniel what? He knew. Daniel what? He knew. Daniel what? Daniel knew. So he wasn't ignorant to the law that was contradiction of his word, of his God. He knew what they said. See, it's one thing to do something when you all know. You'd be like, well, I didn't know that y'all wrote that. I didn't know that you did. Daniel knew what Daniel do out there. I guess Daniel stopped doing what he did. Let's see. Let's see what Daniel did when he knew. What did he do? Now, when Daniel knew mm -hmm. that the writing was signed, uh -huh. he went home. Yeah. And in his upper room. In his upper room. He said, not downstairs. In his upper Hold room. Up. Not hiding in the basement. In his upper room. Not somewhere they can't see him. In his upper he room. He ain't go somewhere they can't see him. He said, let me show you what I think about your law. Let me show you what I think about what you wrote. Let me tell you what I think about it. He said, I'm going to the upper room. To the upper room. I'm going where the anointing he said, in the upper room. He told these apostles, meet me in the upper room. I'm going where I got the power from. I'm going where I got the anointing from. I'm going where the Spirit of God is. And I'm about to commune. The Bible said he went to the upper room. What did he do? What did he do? What did he do? He went to the upper room with his windows open. To no, no. He, he, up, he said, let me show you what time it is. I'm not no closet Christian. I ain't no closet Christian. Open up the window. He always said, he said, open up the window. I'm at the highest peak. Open up the window. What'd he do? With his windows open toward Jerusalem. <laughs> toward the God. With his eyes toward the city of God. Where would our eyes be? Toward the heavens. Let your heart be in the heavens. So he opened up this window. He said, I'm looking for somebody on your job. He said, I'm looking for somebody in your house. Guess what? Stop. He said, I need you to open up the window. Let your neighbors know what you're doing. He said, oh, let your coworkers know what you represent. Let people know, uh, ain't no time for hiding no more. Ain't no time for hiding. You don't try it, my God. You think I'm going to obey a law? You think I'm going to Submit to a law that's contradiction of me glorifying my God. You must be crazy. It wasn't you that lifted me up here. It wasn't you that brought me up here. It wasn't you that set me up here. It wasn't you that empowered me. It wasn't you that kept me. We were saying, oh, he's a mighty God, right? We was praising him, right? God, he's able. We talking about he's able. We testified about he's able. Then guess what? Uh, stop hiding your Stop hiding your anointing. Uh, stop hiding your relationship. Uh, stop hiding. Guess what? Uh, I don't care that you go in a business meeting. I'm not talking politically correct. When I walk in a business meeting, hey, God bless y'all. What's up? Uh, how y'all doing? I don't care what they say. 
God bless you all. You don't tell me. I ain't hide nothing. God bless you. Love you, Mary. Merry Christmas. No, excuse me. Mary, no. Merry Christmas. I don't conform to the world when they world start violating. Because the Bible says I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power to salvation. For all who believe, I came, I came, I was born to testify. I was born to testify. I was born to declare. I was born to decree. For all. I was born to reveal my father's glory. You was doing all right with your laws about the stoplight. You was doing all right with your laws about, you know what, who murder and all that. But when you start making laws that's not in line with the word of God, I, I love you, I like you, but I can't conform to you. Daniel opened up the window. Went to the upper room. Go ahead, go ahead. And he knelt down on his knees. And Daniel humbled himself. <laughs> he said, let me humble myself to the real king of kings. Because it's time for Darius to meet him. It's time for Persia to meet the real king of kings. It's time for the media. He said, God, God was like, I let him go first. I let him conquer Babylon. I let him go first, uh, but it's time for me to give. It, look at look at someone say, it's time for an introduction. It's time, of America. It's time for an introduction to the real. Will the real King Jesus stand up? Uh, uh, will the real? Will the real Jesus? Will the real witnesses stand up? See, let me tell you what's going to happen. See, what's going to happen is when the persuaders get a little more aggressive, when the persuaders get a little more aggressive, that's when that great fall away going to come. And they're going to try to say, well, I'm just trying to be politically correct. I'm just trying to make sure I operate according to the... No, 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 no. When the apostles were on the street preaching the gospel, and they were preaching the gospel, and they came and arrested them, and they said, I tell you what, we're going to let you go, but don't you go back to talk about no Jesus no more. Don't you go back. They said, they said when they came back out, they found the gospel, they found the apostles right back where they were before, testifying, declaring, and decreeing King Jesus. See, see, God don't, all you, all you closet Christians, uh, they got the world as your number one agenda. God is about to uncover you. Uh, God is about to reveal you because uh, he needs some real soldiers. Uh, he needs those who are going to ride and die with you. Uh, come on. Uh, he tired of type of relationships uh, that you only act like you're married to God when you're in church. Uh, you only act like you're married to God when you're at home. Uh, but when you go into your lower places in the world, uh, into the marketplaces, uh, you don't know no God. God said, what? I said, no. Uh-uh. 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 So look at something. Uh-uh. Uh, say God done brought me too far. See, I know. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I know. I know. When I come to your job, I got to give you God, amen. I mean, I got. I got to do what you, I got to give Caesar what Caesar's do, right? I got to come there. I got to do what I need to do. But please don't start implementing things. Please don't start acting with things that's going to. That's going to be contradicting of the word of God. Because uh, I, 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 I won't pray when you tell me when I'm working. I, won't even, I don't even have to put my, my Bible on the desk uh, when I'm working. 
but because I go to my car and I begin to praise, all of a sudden you want to introduce laws for the for the uh, for the parking lot too. Come on, no, 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 no. I ain't got time for no games. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, I'ma testify. I'ma declare. Uh, but I'ma do it in love. I'ma do it in the divine nature of God. Somebody scream, Jesus. Okay, let's sit down. We're going to finish this. Come on, hurry up. See, I, let me tell you something. I've learned, and every man and woman of God who ever preached, they know what I'm about to say is true. When God starts preaching like this, when God starts declaring like this, you can bet your life. He says, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And he's telling his sons and daughters, let me give you a scripture. He said, I tell you these things. So when they come, your joy, we in all out war. You can't hide no more. You can't play no more. Because I'm, guess what? My Bible tells me that God is the one sitting down. And he's the one that rise up. Number one, you don't want no man to promote you anyway. You will be in debt to him. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. He knelt down on his knees. He knelt down, go ahead. Three times that day. No, no, he did it once. Three times. He did it once and hoping he won't get caught. Three times. Father, son, Holy Ghost. He knelt down three times. He said, I just want to make sure if you ain't seen me the first time. That you ain't going to rain on this party right here. You was good until you start implementing laws. That's contradiction of the word of God. Go ahead. And he prayed and gave thanks before his God. And he communicated and thanked his God. Go ahead. As was his custom since early days. See, he didn't defile himself. Do not so why he did it from his early days. Now go ahead, keep going. Verse 11. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. They found him. Y'all know they was looking for him. They found him praying. There he go. There he go. We got him. We got him. You know they were like, we got him. We about to, we about to take his job. We about to take his position. Oh, we got be strong. We got him. They got, they think they got you. See, God will let them think they got you, but God, said, but God said, let me show you where your faith is. They, I got them, but go ahead, go ahead. Verse 12. And they went before the king. And, and they went before the authority. Go ahead. And spoke concerning the king's decree. Oh, they went before the king and spoke about the law that he had created. Look at the persuaders. Mm, mm, don't persuade us, boy. Go ahead. They said, have you not signed the decree yes. that every man who petitions any other god or man within 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? Oh, go ahead. The king answered and said, the thing is true. According to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which does not alter. He said it can't be broken. See, they're not going to. See, some of us think that the world going to change because you're in that fire. No, God just going to walk with you through it. Go ahead. So they answered and said before uh -huh. the king, uh -huh. that Daniel. Woo, they look at that Daniel. We got him. That Daniel. Go ahead. That Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, then they're going to talk about, you know, one of them from Judah. But y'all know Judah means what? They, 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 was, they was praising him when they said from Judah. The king should say it. You know, so everybody says to stop praise. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. That Daniel, the captain from Judah, does not show due regard for you, O king. Oh, he don't respect you, king. He don't respect what you're saying. You know how people, when people, persuaders always want to make somebody feel like they don't respect you. They're not down with you. They're not like we are, king. See, people who jock for position are persuaders. People who trash other people to get in position, they are persuaders. They are persuaders. They always in the king's ear, 
persuading the king to move toward them. Go ahead. He does not respect you, O king, or the decree that you've signed. They don't respect you, king, or but, the law that you put into place. Go ahead. But he makes petitions three times a day. But he go to his God three times a day. Go ahead. And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself. You know why he was displeased with himself? Because he was about to deal with an influencer. He said, wait a minute. See, a true king will never want to get rid of an influencer. Anybody that's walking with somebody with God, you don't ever want to get rid of an influencer. Don't you try to change an influencer? Don't you ever get rid of people that God, when God, if God gives you an influencer, you better hold on tight. Because an influencer changed atmospheres. Go ahead. He was displeased with himself uh -huh. and set his heart on David. He on, was, Daniel. on Daniel. The king was like, oh man, keep going, keep going. Come on, we got to finish it. Go ahead. He set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. Uh -huh. He wanted to, watch this. He done created the law, but set his heart to deliver him because he saw what it was going to cause him. See, this, watch this. Somebody ought to know it's going to cost them something when they come against you. Why? Because you're such a, a great influencer to their life. They ought to be like, no, nah, man. I don't want to lose that sister. I don't want to lose that brother. They, no. I don't want to lose that person. Go ahead. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. This cat fast and he, he on his face. The king on his face because he don't want to. Daniel, this, his influence, he's about to lose his influence. Daniel has such an excellent spirit and he influenced the king so greatly that the king, he fast, he's in torment over the law that he was given, the law he was persuaded to create. Go ahead. Then these men approached the king mm -hmm. and said to the king. Here come the persuaders. When they, when they realize you're not doing what you're supposed to do, here come the persuaders. Go ahead. Know this, O king. Know this, O king. That it is the law of it the It is Medes the law. And the Persians that no decree or statute which the king establishes may be changed. Come on. You know, it's the same thing the children of Israel did when Jesus was being about to be crucified. When they said Caesar is our king. They was, they was persuading Pilate, hey, you better do it. You got to get rid of this dude. Come on. He has exalted himself as a king, and Caesar is our king. Go ahead. So the king gave the command. So the king said, I got to do it. Go ahead. And they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. See, I want, you to, I want us to get this. How many, how many of us going to be glory revealed, want to be God's glory revealers? Raise your hand, because I do. Let me tell you something. There are going to be times you're going to be cast in. See, there are going to be times that God is not going to come when you think he's going to come. You might lose the house. You might lose some things. But you got to understand that you are an influencer. And how you act through the process reveals the glory of God. Let me say that again. How you act through the process reveals the glory of God. Because they might talk about shutting it down. He might talk about divorcing you. Mom might put you out the house. But your job is to be an influencer. Pure gold is made pure gold by going through the fire. And God got to get the defilement out of you. He's getting it out of us. Anybody been finding themselves in some fire lately? I don't know about you. How many of y'all been, been trying to attack your mind and thoughts and things? Oh. Don't worry about it. God just, you, are, you, you say, you feel with the Holy Ghost. He just, he disintegrating. He bringing some foolishness to the top. 
It's gonna, it's gonna improve your fast life. It's gonna improve your prayer life. Go ahead. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, your God. Let's say it again. Your God. Say it again. Your God. This is this a, this a, this a Gentile. But watch this. He know Daniel's God because Daniel conducted himself with a spirit of excellence. He know Daniel's job, God by the way he act at work. He ain't preach the way he act. He knew Daniel's job. He knew Daniel's God the way he act in the classroom. He ain't even say God. He he knew his God by his watch this. I gotta watch what, watch what he say. Go watch what he say. Keep going. Your God, whom you serve continually. Your God, who you what? Whom you serve. No, continually. Nope. Sometimes. Continually. When you feel like it. Continually. When things get rough. Continually. He say you your God, whom you serve. You don't take a break. You serve him continuously. See, that's what God, that's what the Holy Spirit want to empower you. To not serve him for a task. See, we got too many Christians who serve God for a task. Instead of for a life lived. Because, no, we do, uh, uh, when somebody do an event or period, or when we do this, all that is good for the task. But after the task, do you serve him continuously? After you get married, do you serve him continuously? I've seen a lot of people get married, and then all of a sudden, like, where they servanthood go? Where is their commitment? Where is their hunger and thirst for God? You can't testify to them. They're continuous. Oh, I do it. I just do it home in my closet. But what happened to the upper room? What happened to other people needing to see you? It ain't about you. What about other people needing to see you? Okay. Okay. Let's go. Go ahead. Your God, whom you serve continually, he, going. he will deliver you. He, he said, this is Darius, the king saying, boy, I got, the way you carry yourself calls me to believe that you got a God that can deliver you. When the unsaved can testify about how you carry yourself, that your girl, what you, girl, why? Because sometimes you may feel a little down, and, and, and somebody unsaved, my girl, what you talking about? You know your God got you. That's true. They say that. They say that. Even the unsaved will say that to you. That's if you've been serving God continuously, and you have a bad day, and then look at that, somebody will say, girl, girl, you know your God. Girl, your God got you. What you tripping for? That's true. Your God got you. What you? That's right. And you looking at them, you looking at them, you looking at them like, you. Thank you. You walking away like, maybe I should have known that. <laughs> God will use people to encourage you. They don't even. Go ahead. Especially when you are an influencer. Why? Because you have influenced their life to stop them. You have been a positive influence over their life. And that's, guess what? Because you sold it, you will reap it. Go ahead. Verse 17. Uh-huh. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den. No way to get out. Go ahead. We're going to read fast. Come on, come on. And the king sealed it with his own signet ring. Bam. And Go with ahead. the signets of the Lord's. Go ahead. That the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. Mm -hmm. Let it be written. Bam. Let it be done. Go ahead. Verse 18. Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. Mm-hmm. And no musicians were brought before him. Wait a minute. The unsaved fasting? The unsaved person? King Darius is fasting. See, that's... He got influenced by someone. Hey. See, your influence... Make somebody else fast. My God. ...will have a stripper praying for you. Your influence... Will have thugs fasting for you. Because they don't want to see you destroy. Why? Because you're such a positive influence on their life. Amen. Amen. People in your life, 
They see you going through. They don't even know God. Girl, I'm going to pray for you. Why? Because your influence caused them to recognize somebody. Your influence caused them to understand that your God is able. And even through your weak moments, your influence will cost them, even the ones who don't know them. I'm going to beseech them for you. She in the club. She getting licked up. She come to the work job. She all messed up. She, but you always got a nice word for her. You always buy something to eat. And guess what? You got, you're going up. The boss is attacking you. And God is using the boss to prune you. And she see what you're going through. And guess what? You always got a kind word. And then you get to work. And you know she done came out the club all weekend. But when she see you, she said, you know what? I took two hours out of my you no know, party time. And I was praying for you. I was crying out for you. And you look at the way me. Hold up, hold up. How can God use you? Because the church ain't got time to pray for you. They too busy looking for a wife. They too busy looking for a husband. They too busy looking for stuff to serve them. They too busy looking to blow up. They too busy looking for God to give them something. So God don't use the ones. He don't use the ones that you think he'll let you. He gonna use the ones that one on the back seat, that young girl in the strip club, uh, that thug on the corner. See, if you won't go, uh, God gonna raise up somebody who will go. Uh, if you won't do it, uh, he'll raise up somebody who will do it. And she say stuff to you like this. You know what? You know what? I, um, I, um, man, I was struggling to go to the club this week, but because you were an influencer, you're like, yes, yeah, because you know, she ain't used to struggle before, and you're like, God, break it down, break it down, break it down, God, break it down, she was like, and then she'll tell you next time, I, I did go, but I don't know what it was, but I, I, I sat there for an hour, I started feeling, I went home. And in the midst of you going through your turmoil, she see you praising. God said, I'm looking for some influencers. Come on, finish it up. And some of y'all like, man, I'm tired. I'm sorry, we're gonna ride this to the end. All right to the end. All right to the end. Come on, let's go. Also, his sleep went out from him. He couldn't even sleep. Go ahead. Verse 19. Verse 19, go ahead. Then the king arose early from the morning. He getting up. He getting up. Say, time. Everybody say, time for some glory. Time for some glory. See, see this kind of glory right here. Keep going, keep going. Go ahead, go ahead. He rose early in the morning mm -hmm. and went to, in haste to the den of lions. Uh-huh, 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 go ahead. And when he came to the den, uh -huh. he cried out with lamenting voice to Daniel. He weeping, Daniel! Daniel! Come on, be there, boy. Please be there, boy. I got all these knuckleheads that can't run nothing, Daniel. I got all these knuckleheads. And they fake gods. Please be there, Daniel. I got, a con I got a bunch of people in the Senate. I got a bunch of people in the Congress. <laughs> I got in Washington, D.C. Oh, Daniel, please be there. See, somebody crying out for the remnant of God. The world is moaning, groaning, waiting for the sons of God because they like, man, them knuckleheads in Washington, D.C., huh? Uh -uh, I need, come on, God. Come on, God. Don't let them be destroyed by the laws. Don't let them be destroyed by standing. Go ahead. The king spoke, uh -huh. saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually. Let me ask you a question. When you were in college, when you were in middle school, high school, when you were in a business meeting, and you have dealt with people for a long time, do they know your God? 
Do they know your God? When you, do they know that you serve the God of the living God? Do they know that you serve a living God? Because God going to give you room. He going to give you room to introduce himself. You know, people spent nine weeks in a class and nobody knew they were saved. For real? So let me get this right. You spent nine weeks in a class of people who are broken, hurt, wounded, in darkness, and nobody saw no light. Nobody saw God in that room. So, this, so let me get this right. So this is the God we have today. He only comes in when the world wants him. God didn't use you to minister to not one person in that room. There's not a place I've ever been since I've been saved. There's not a job I ever had that when I was saved that somebody didn't get saved or delivered. I'm not boasting in me. The God in me will tolerate nothing less. Go ahead. Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? Come on, we got to hear it. We got to hear it. Come on. Where Daniel? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. Look at it. Watch it. Did he curse the king out? No. See, y'all got to get this. He didn't say, you're no good, lousy, red-haired, fake he not talking to them like they talking to Donald Trump on the on, on, on the internet. Donald Trump, he they he ain't throw nobody in the well. I don't know. He probably may. <laughs> he ain't throw nobody in no lion den, not to our knowledge. <laughs> this cat throwed in the lion's den, and what he say, King? What? O oh, King, live forever. So he didn't trash him or disrespect him. He said, oh, king, live forever. Say glory. glory. Keep going. My God My has God. sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth. Say so the angel of the Lord came in here and shut their mouth up. Now watch this. I want y'all to get this. The nature of the lion is to be a devourer. Yeah, I begin. God says, I will rebuke the devourer. But see, the reason why he was able to rebuke the devourer in Daniel, because Daniel was willing to pay his full amount, his life. He rebuked the devourer in Daniel's back. Because the lion's natural instinct is to devour. And they weren't feeding these lions. And the lion's sitting there hungry. See, the enemy can be hungry and want to get you. He can be, he's starving for you and can't, can't touch you. He's starving to rip away. He want to see you decline. He want to see you crushed. He want to see your demise. And yet it is his nature to kill, steal, and destroy. But yet, like MC Hammer say, can't touch this. Can't touch this. See, if the devil was able to touch, destroy you, you would be destroyed. So please stop talking about voodoo. Please stop talking about that foolishness. Oh my God, I don't see preachers be doing it. Oh my God, voodoo preachers preaching. About, they preaching voodoo like voodoo, voodoo more powerful than God. Next time somebody cut a chicken leg and, or cut a piece of chicken and put it beside your dough, get some grease, fry it up, get some rice, eat it. And say, and Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Next time they put white powder around your dough, gather it up, put it on some dough and you can't touch this. Have you not read? The scripture says, I have given you power over all the works of the enemy. All of it. And nothing shall hurt you. God is tired of these spineless. No, they all know who they are. God, come on. The devil really, oh my God, he really, oh my God, the devil got me going. I, my family. You better stand up and look him in his eyes and say, well, if you don't get up out this house in the name of Jesus. If God be for me, mine line up with the word. 
fight the good fight of. That's why for the next, that's why y'all know we're getting ready for next month. We're going to put on the full what? I'm amazed. People are like, I'm tired. I don't feel like I'm learning. You better look at somebody. You better grow. Go ahead. My God has sent his angel mm -hmm. and shut the lion's mouth. Yes, he did. So that they have not hurt me. Uh huh. Because I was found innocent before him. He said, See, the judge you need to be worried about. See, you don't need to be worried about no judge in Miami. You don't need to be worried about no county, county court. You don't need to be worried about no Supreme Court. You want to know the judge you need to be worried about is that judge of God. That's the judgment seat you need to watch out for. That's the judge you better make sure you're in alignment with. The rest of these judges, what they, what's the worst they can do? Sentence you to death? All you're going to do is usher me to my God. You can't, what you gonna do, send to me, so you can't, you, what you gonna do, usher me to death? What you gonna do, put me in five years in prison? I'm gonna start a prison ministry. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? I'm innocent. He said, I'm innocent. See, we gotta make sure you're innocent, though. When you're innocent, that means you're in alignment with the word of God. I'm doing... See, man's law is one thing. God's law is supreme. Man's law, God will never tell you to conform to a law of man when that man's law is in contradiction of the word of God. Because then God will be, God will be pre approving unrighteousness, lawlessness. And he will be saying that his law is not supreme. That's why we have to pray for this nation. We have to pray for this nation, not because, come on, how come they go on in the, the high schools? Do you see how many beautiful babies died in that high school? But wait a minute. But they died in the city streets too. They died in urban America. They died everywhere. Our children are on drugs. Our daughters are dancing in strip clubs. People are hurt and broken. And we the church sitting around wondering who we gonna marry. He says, spare not, cry out. God already got you. God, look at someone say, God already has you. Go ahead. I was found innocent before him, mm -hmm. and also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Look what he just said. How many heard what he just said? King, I did no wrong before you. See, y'all don't understand what he, let me tell you what he's saying. King, I can't do wrong if you sign something that's wrong in the first place. Y'all ain't get, you gotta get it. See, when... When you don't obey, when you say I'm not having, when you say I'm not down with men and men marrying men or, or abortions, you didn't, you're not breaking the law. You're not doing anything wrong because God never established that. So I'm not doing you wrong when I stick to what God says is right. Because just because you say it's right, don't make it right. When a female feel like, let's say, let's say a woman feel like she's loved when she getting abused. Just because she feels that she's loved getting abused, that doesn't make that true. That doesn't make that love either. Just because you say it don't make it so. Just because somebody say, well, I think I love women, that doesn't make it so. You can't tell me who to love. No, but I can tell you what love is. And love is, not, love is definitely not that. How are you going to tell me? Because the Bible, because the word of God says God is love. He didn't say he loves. He is love. And his word comes from a place always of love. God loves you. 
God loves us. God is not angry, and God is not angry with people. He's not angry with sinners. He just wants sinners to be delivered. Go ahead. He's angry with sin. Finish it up. Verse 23. Uh-huh. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him. Yep, go ahead. And commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So watch this. The same one that put you in is going to be the one to do what? Take you out. Take you out. See, when you're a true, influ when you're a true influencer, the same ones that's going to dish you are the same ones going to come to ask you to pray for them. When you're a true influencer, see, that's why I'm going to tell you something. I have a fear, and we should, a good fear, is be careful how you deal with people. Never get yourself so big or somebody that you think you can deal with people any kind of way. Because you might not know who you're dealing with. Watch how you evaluate people. Watch how you categorize people. Because you might be dealing with a king or a queen in the kingdom. Go ahead. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, uh -huh. and no injury whatsoever was found on him. There was no injury in him. Go ahead. Because he believed in his God. Because he, everybody say, because he what? Believed. Come on, everybody say it. Because he what? The word of God says he will never leave you to be ashamed. He did not say that the weapon wouldn't be formed. He just said that the weapon wouldn't prosper. How many of you know if, if they ran a sword through you, when, they ran a, when, the, when the king ran a sword through James and James died, did the weapon prosper? No, it didn't. Because why? James had eternal life in God. All he did was usher James into the presence of God. See, when you accept Christ, what's the worst thing somebody could do? If they kill your body. So, your spirit going with God. You're not going to be here forever anyway. Let me tell you what the word of God says. Absent from the body is present with the Lord. All you did is cause me no longer have to pay bills no more. I ain't got no rent. So now I ain't crying. You know, I ain't got to worry about all that. Now I'm not promoting death. I'm trying to get you to understand that Jesus paid the price for death. And death is not waiting for you. I promise you, when you close your eyes, you're going to open them back up again in the presence of God. Because you can't kill spirit. You are spirit. Your body is just the place where you live. Y'all understand that, right? Okay. That's why from the dirt it came. And don't get me wrong, you are, I look around, you are some beautiful dirt. No, you are. It's black dirt and red dirt and yellow dirt and white dirt. And people are arguing about what's the best dirt. Well, my white dirt is better than your black dirt. Well, my black dirt is better than your red dirt. But when you dig them up from the grave, ain't nothing but dirt. It's what's inside the dirt that matters. Go ahead. Verse 24. Uh -huh. And the king gave the command. Uh -huh. And they brought those men who had accused them. Oh, man. And they brought the ones who accused them. Go ahead. And they cast them into the den of lions. Them, their children, and their wives. And the lion overpowered them and broke all of their bones in pieces before they ever came to the bottom of the den. What, I'm trying, what I want you all to understand is this. Sometimes the decisions that we make can affect your generation. Some of us are living with decisions our mothers made and dad made. Some of us are living with decisions with our grandmother made. Your decisions don't just affect you. When you become rebellious, they affect everybody that loves you. And that they made the decision, but their wives and their children paid for it. How many know when you make a decision to go out there and scam and you drug, everybody become affected by your decisions? When you make a decision suicide, everybody that loves you is affected by that decision. 
when you make a decision to, to serve God, everybody is influenced by that decision. You want your family to change? Then you change. You be the light to that darkness. You want some money ain't going to change your family. It's just going to make you, it's going to cause you just to spend a little more foolishness. Your location, if you was a fool in Miami, you'll be a fool in Atlanta. If you was hoish in Miami, you'll be a hoish in New York. Amen? Just like if, you, if the glory of God shine in you in this church, it ought to shine in you at your job. If the glory of God shine in you <laughs> at work, it ought to shine at home. Don't act one way at home and act another way at work. If you are a young woman of integrity, integrity is who you are, not what you display when you want something. If you are a young man of self-control, self-control is to play, display wherever you are. It's not self-control just when I'm with my wife. Now that I'm out of town and she can't see me, now I have self-control. You fake. Amen. That's it. He prayed. Did he say anything after that? Go ahead. Do the prayer. I want you to hear the prayer. Verse 25. Then King Darius wrote. Now, who wrote this? I want you to see what those who in the world will write when the glory is revealed. I want you to see what those in the world will write about your God when you let your God put you in a lion's den. And let God be revealed in your situation. What did King Darius write? To all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all of the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I made a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. That's what America needs to see. America needs to see sons and daughters who are willing to reveal the glory of God. And then that will be America's testimony. That will be the Congress testimony. That will be the Senate testimony. That will be the President's testimony. May it be Obama, may it be Donald Trump, or whoever want to walk in that office. When they can see you and I walk in God through a storm. When they can see you and I refuse to stand down on God. When they can see someone continuously serving God, they will testify every nation, every tongue that should tremble at the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He read. For he is the living God. He is the what? The living God. He ain't no dead God. He ain't no statue that you carved out of your own hands. He ain't no Buddha, no Muhammad. He ain't, no, he ain't something that you made up. He ain't no man that can die. He is the true and living God. Go ahead. And steadfast forever. And he what? He is steadfast. Unchangeable. He is steadfast and unchangeable. He is the, he the same God back in a, he the same God back in BC that he, he is now in 1800. He, same God in 18 as he is in 2018. Go ahead. For his kingdom is the only one which shall not be destroyed. Every other kingdom. Do you all know one time that it used to be a Roman kingdom? The United States was not the most powerful nation. There used to be Rome. Read your history book. Rome ruled, the, Rome ruled the world. And before Rome, Babylon did. No, they ruled the world. These were kingdoms, powerful kingdoms. Where are they now? But where is God still standing? All these kingdoms that thought, you know what? We ain't going to serve no one God. We ain't got one God on the nation. We're going to have our many gods. We're going to serve the God we want. Where are they now? Did you think Rome, when Rome had, when Rome 
wiped out other nations and colonized them. Did you think they would ever see their demise? Persia, Medium, great kingdoms with great kings. Yet where are they now? Just like America, the same nation who said one nation under God indivisible, who is now a nation, one nation under gods, and so divided, people just hate each other. And yet, how long do you think God going to sit back and let America just roll out dirty before he begins to send a revival? Before he raise up some sons and daughters and say, you know what? But see, them sons and daughters, when the law began to change, get ready. Because when you stand, now you have to stand against the law. And that law going to try to persecute you. But when they try to persecute you, God going to reveal his glory. Go ahead. And his dominion mm -hmm. shall endure to the end. His kingdom shall reign forever and his dominion shall do to the end. That's the only one going to last. Go ahead. Verse 27. Uh-huh. He delivers and rescues. Come on, somebody. Is he a deliverer? Does he rescue? I'm so glad he rescued me. Anybody glad he rescues you? How many of us know he re who did he rescue you from? Many of us for myself. He rescued. Because them decisions that you making, that was the same decisions got your life looking toe up. And you think you could dress it, you think you could dress that old toe up life looking good, but it's still toe up. I look good toe up. Yeah, but you're still toe up. It don't matter how many white dresses you put on top of boo-boo. The stink gonna come through eventually. Go ahead. And his works, and he works signs and wonders. And he works signs and wonders. Go ahead. In heaven and on earth. And heaven and earth. He going to show people that he is the God of present. Go ahead. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lion. This is the king saying it. Who has delivered my influencer from the hands of the devourer. Go ahead. Verse 28. Uh-huh. So this Daniel. This Daniel. Prospered in the reign of Darius. He prospered. Look at him. He did what? He prospered in the reign of Darius. But see, people want to prosper today, right? How, yeah, that's the new message, the prosperity message, right? We want to prosper today, but don't nobody want to go in the lion's den. We want to prosper, but don't nobody want to... See, we want to prosper without God. But see, to prosper in God, that's less of you and more him. Go ahead. And in the reign of Cyrus, the Persian. And he prospered. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. Listen. Listen, if you're sitting there, just be still for a moment. If you're sitting there and you're saying, you know, I want to be an influencer instead of persuader. See, the world has a lot of persuaders. Girl, you better give them some, persuade them. Always persuade somebody to partake of sin. Always persuade somebody to do the filth and nastiness that you're doing that 